Друзья, всем привет! Вы слушаете 66-й выпуск SD-каста, подкаста о разработке по его окрестностях. И мы продолжаем серию выпусков, связанных с интервью, взятых на Highload. В этом выпуске мы вместе с Петей и Мязиным из 5 минутки PHP, 5 минутки React взяли интервью небольшое у Михаила Леонова и Витаса Валентиновича из Ламоды. Ну, больше речь шла про доклад Витаса о логировании и о том, как обрабатывать логи. Оно немножко на английском, поэтому имейте в виду и приятного прослушивания. Всем привет! Вы слушаете очередное включение с Хайлоуда, да, в этой виртуальной студии. Хотя как виртуально? Привычка, привычка, извиняйте. В этой реальной студии я, Костя КС Даймон, Петя. Пятиминутка PHP. Да, да, и с нами рядом сейчас Михаил из Ламода, он уже был чуть ранее, и Витас тоже из Ламода. Всем привет. Привет. Привет, ребят. А, Витас, ну вопрос больше к тебе. Ты, у тебя буквально был недавно доклад, ты сейчас только что прочитал, про как вы работаете с логами. Да, вот расскажи сразу, в чем, в чем боль основная с логами? Их много, куда их девать и что с ними делать? Yeah, that, that's the main problem. Um, I think the biggest problem we are experiencing with logs in Lamoda that we don't, we don't understand what kind of logs do we want to keep and what's important for us. Right now we're just dumping everything and expecting miracles. You mean, what's the meaning, meaning part of logs? Some kind of what? Which logs are important? And sometimes uh, after after the presentation, I just heard a guy who's telling that they are really trying to retain the logs because every log is important, like it's of critical importance to ship the log. And dude, that's not logs. Those are audit inform. That is audit information. Just ship it to database, and that's it. Make a proper assumption that you need to ship it somewhere. If you're dumping it into log system. You're dumping it. It should get out somewhere, but it might not. So it's okay to no, to do not dump some part of logs because it's not critical audit information. Oh yeah, you should assume that logs are always missing. I mean, you should assume that logs may may disappear. Okay. After you do that, and after you let yourself to assume that logs are disappearing, life becomes so much easier. <laughs> <sighs> one day of logs there, one day of logs there. Eh? <laughs> Because, well, if you lose one log and your life fails, well, it's, you will have a bad time pretty okay. soon. How many logs can I lose to keep my business run? All of them. You should actually, if, if your business is well built, you should lose all logs, which are logs, and your business should not stop for that. Then why don't use such a brilliant so piece of software Dev DevNu <laughs> for logs? Uh, because sometimes uh, when you make changes to your business, you would like to know what's going on. Uh, well, to be honest, logs are interesting only after a change. If, if something changes, then you're looking at logs like to understand uh, if you change uh, it properly. To collect uh, correct metrics about changes. Yeah, metri metrics are a little bit different. Yeah. Metrics are like you don't want to be blind, so you, you keep on looking at metrics. And logs and, and metrics are only related at that part where you're actually trying to understand the metric out of the log. In worst case scenario, uh, Actually, not worse than the best case scenario, you would understand what kind of metrics you need and you don't even send logs, you send metrics directly. Just put it somewhere. You have also databases for that. You have time series databases specifically yeah. designed for that. So just, uh, it, there is a um, fine development uh, approach, which is segregation of, uh, of this Not business, segregation of... Uh, concerns? Yeah, concerns, thank you. So, try do that. And if you can't, then yes, then you're logging everything everywhere and you're trying to fix other people's problems and further and further, further down the road. I, I think this is common knowledge that it's cheaper, cheapest to fix the problem while designing. After you have the problem, 
<laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> okay, and you gave a talk today about a logging system at LaModa. You have a, your own piece of software to keep to dump logs? No, it's just a interpretation of ELK stack. We're basically using ELK. That would ELK. Yeah. Elastic search, elastic log stash kebab. With Kafka in front of them. That's it. This is our magical software. <laughs> <laughs> and syslog. And er, er syslog. And er login to this uh, Yeah, <laughs> and, and a few layers of syslog and file beat somewhere also. But, but the core concept is still the same EL key. Like we still put all of those things there. And the only thing that we maybe have differently from other people is how we show this thing to developers. Like they have a contract. You have a contract. The contract is clear, it's written in one sentence. That's it. And what is the contract? Uh, send JSON format logs over STD out. Everything else is not your problem. Over STD out. Yeah. Is it somehow related to Docker or Kubernetes? Yeah, yeah it, uh, it is. It, it was precisely aimed at that point to avoid any additional software which could run on Docker or, or Kubernetes because the software already runs, like Docker container has the, uh, container, sorry, runtime has the aggregation. So why should you use another, another aggregator instead of the thing that is developed in, in, in the system itself? The, the, actually, the same goes on with our uh, Linux uh, distributions right now with systemd approach. There is, there is a journal D, which is an aggregator on its own. Yeah, some some kind of. No one likes system D, but that's not the question. Yeah, of course. Like <laughs> everyone has their own holy wars, but you know it works. So why should you do something next to it? You'll be wasting CPU resources. So can you um, explain a little bit about how to uh, how to aggregate? And collect logs. So what's what is approached for collecting? You already had mentioned that only collect what you needed. Uh, some what maybe some discuss about this. Yeah, if you go and you finally manage to do this job of teaching every developer to only log what they must, then you will not need any aggregations whatsoever, because the logs will themselves be like in one strict. So it's, sufficient, okay, yeah, yeah of that's course. It. You just look at the data and it's data. It's already not, not logs, but it is data, which is formatted, well-prepared, and it's prepared to answer a question, which you eventually want to ask from that data, like maybe my response time. What is my response time? So if that's the question, then developers provide you sufficient and targeted data to do that. If you don't know the question, which is usually the case. <laughs> most of the time. Yeah, most of the time you don't know the question or you actually even don't want to know the question because you want to un like you want to raise questions after the logs were generated. Or maybe questions appear sometime yeah, like, later. Yeah, that's the idea. That's the idea of, of logging itself. So then you just try to guess good enough what kind of data do you want and then, you know, query. Make a query. If you can query it, then you can understand it. Also, you can visualize, which also helps with understanding. Sorry. Okay. If I'm a developer, I do JSON output to STD out. But what if I need to dump some logs from third party software, which is not known about the contract? Yeah, sure. Then you add an additional software which makes the transformation. The, yeah, third party. Like you add another another layer of code which actually agrees to the contract. Uh, I think that actually has development uh, development term glue layer, right? I mean, you just do the same thing. So you do it in LaModa? You have yeah, of course we do. It. <laughs> I mean, when adapters or log transformers, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. actually we have some kind of 
adapters for PHP FPM itself <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, because it, uh, there is no way to uh, dump JSON format logs from FPM actually. Mm -hmm. And we have some adapters. Uh, it's a log stash or FluentD as I know. Uh, for, for what? Uh, PHP logs. Uh, PHP logs are from uh, they are passed in RCS log, so you're sending through socket to RCS log and then oh, it it's not tested out. No, it's not tested yet. Like, of course we're making adapters. Of course, I mean the contract just changes its location. But the, we we are trying to keep the contract stable. Like, just have an entry point and go on with it. And what uh, you are doing with all that uh, logs that you collected? It's a huge, I think, amount yeah, of so disk space. And you, all, you, as you already mentioned, you don't need all that stuff. You only need some kind of uh, semantic uh, meaning yeah, data. So, so data. We do the same as all people do with logs. We throw them away, eventually. I mean, if you look at it, all of the logs are end up in death null. <laughs> just maybe after a week, maybe after two months, maybe after half a year, but eventually you throw them away. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> so we do the same. <laughs> after we're done with them, actually after four days, we make uh, archives and those archives are kept for maybe two months maximum because we don't have that much storage space. Like, sorry guys, we are not... How yet. much amount of data is generated for example, after day, or per day, uh, per hour? 32 terabytes per week. week. Yeah. <laughs> Huge amount. Enough, to be honest, yeah. enough. It's 200 gigabytes of index data per hour. So, if, if, from my perspective, that's enough. What's your coolest story about uh, incident where you have to get logs from two months ago, from some kind of archive. Just to investigate some... No, I have never done that. Actually, I, I hate to do that. <laughs> yeah, I, I know that developers are doing that, but <laughs> yeah. sysadmins are not doing that. We have an option to create a Jira ticket for our ops team and ask them to open an index for a particular date. And uh, after that happened, uh, we could search in these logs uh, some kind of information what was gone, going wrong in, in the system at, the, at that time. And that, that was because, uh, the reason was because you, for example, uh, built uh, some new version of your service and only after uh, some time you mentioned that there are some problems, so why it's... It depends. Uh, in few services uh, we have some kind of issues that comes in uh, some visible for problems. users some. and uh, they post an incident for our internal uh, IT support team after that ticket uh, will go to development, wait the next <laughs> sprint, and after that to development, developer looks at the issue. Issue date. <laughs> yeah, issue date, and decides, oh, I need the data in logs for a particular date. And goes to ops, open the <laughs> ticket, <laughs> and so on. If luck strikes, then you find those logs. If not, well, uh, let's wait for another incident. <laughs> yeah. Not enough data. Yeah, not enough data. <laughs> that, that's actually a really, really tough issue. And uh, if we had infinite storage, it would be much better. But unfortunately, we don't. Where are you store? On magnetic lens? Or? <laughs> on tape? No, no in, the, in spinning disks. We have arrays of spinning disks. Like uh, old hardware, which already is not longer, no longer useful in production. Uh -huh. Just place it in, in like darkest corner <laughs> of your data center, and then push the logs down there. Good old servers. Yeah, nobody knows about. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys for such interview, Vitas, no problem, Mikhail. 
До новых встреч. Храните логи и процветайте.